As an Ethereum investor, I'm super happy that we're hitting new all-time highs, but I'm also kind of worried right now because of an upcoming hard fork this summer, which might cause a civil war and give us yet another version of Ethereum, just like when Bitcoin Cash split from Bitcoin. That's not good, by the way, because it could negatively impact the price of ETH if there's another version floating around the market. So you know me, I dove deep and researched everything about this upcoming event. And in this video, I wanna share with you what's the controversy, how it might affect us, which site I support, and my prediction for how it's all gonna shake out. So if you're an ETH holder, you gotta watch this so you know how this might affect your investment. Strap in my friend, because it's time for the deep dive. Hey folks, Kevin here from BFB, and if you find this video helpful at all, then please give it a quick like because it helped me out immensely. Okay, so Ethereum, they've got the most core developers of any blockchain out there. These are devs that improve the code base of the underlying network, not the ones that are building their own projects on top. Every once in a while, they package together a few updates into a hard fork and then schedule a date for everyone to switch over. They're called hard forks because the new version of the code is not compatible with the old version. So miners and nodes have to change the software they're running in order for the upgrade to happen. If some of them don't change, then we'll have two versions of Ethereum running at the same time. One with the old set of rules and one with the new rules as defined by the code changes. Usually this is not a problem and everyone's on the same page. So the old network ceases to exist when everyone has switched over. But in this upcoming hard fork, one of the changes has really pissed off miners because it directly reduces the amount of money they make. Remember, miners buy expensive hardware to crunch numbers and race against all the other miners to solve the next block. If they are the first to solve a block, they get paid. They earn not only the standard block reward, which right now is 2 ether, but they also rake in all the gas fees for the transactions they included. So while we complain about paying $70 gas fees, you can imagine how the Ethereum miners are loving it. Right now, the Ethereum network uses a simple auction system to decide which transactions to include in a block. The more gas you offer to pay, the more likely miners are gonna include your transaction in their block. After all, those gas fees go to them if they solve their block first. The problem is this is super inefficient because we have to estimate what's the right fee to send our transaction with. This is not only difficult for us, it's also hard for many Ethereum wallets and DeFi apps to predict the optimal fees to use. So the result is that people are paying drastically different amounts of gas for transactions in the same block. We've seen transactions paying five times more gas than his peers. It just doesn't make sense for them to differ that much. If there was a better way to tell what gas fees we should be paying, the range that we see per block would be much smaller. That's why this controversial solution was proposed, called EIP-1559. Basically, instead of one gas fee, they're proposing two fees, a base fee and an inclusion fee. The base fee is set completely by an algorithm, and it changes depending on how congested the network is. But what you gotta know is this, all transactions within a block pay the same base fee. Because the fee changes in a predictable manner, wallets can now accurately choose the gas fees for us, rather than us having that responsibility. The whopper here is that this base fee will be burned rather than go to the miners, which is amazing for holders because it reduces the circulating supply of ether, but now miners make a lot less money. The inclusion fee is like a tip for miners, but it's optional, only if you want your transaction to go through fast. But even if you tip a very small amount, your transaction is still likely to be processed within the next few blocks because of another change that's part of this EIP, and that's flexible block sizes. Essentially, instead of a fixed block size that limits the number of transactions that can be included Included, the block size will expand when the network is congested and contract when there's a slow period. This gets us the best of both worlds because bigger blocks can process more transactions in times of high demand. But when demand is low, smaller blocks keep the network more compact and easy to manage. These changes may sound simple, but they will actually have a profound impact on how we experience the Ethereum network. No more massively overpaying for gas fees compared to other transactions in the same block. Also, the system is just more predictable, and that means our experience with wallets and DeFi apps will be improved as well. And on the topic of wallets, there's a new ultra-secure hardware wallet that you should check out, 
It's called Opolo, and they're also our sponsors for this video. Their chip has an industry-leading assurance level, which just means that it's super secure. It's been externally audited, and they support over 120 coins plus thousands of tokens. They have mobile and desktop apps currently available, and those are integrated with Changely in one inch, so you can easily swap coins straight from your own wallet. Their Kickstarter campaign is live right now, and if you decide to back them, you can get your device at a 47% discount. They do have limited pieces though, and their Kickstarter won't be open forever, so go check them out using my link down below. As for the Ethereum upgrade, it sounds great and everyone's happy, right? Well, definitely not the miners. In the month of February, Ethereum miners reached almost $1.4 billion in total revenue, with almost half of that coming from gas fees. So this change would make them lose a ton of potential revenue. Flexpool, which is one of the smaller mining pools, took it upon themselves to start a campaign against this EIP-1559. Their campaign quickly gained steam because other smaller pools joined them, and then the two biggest pools, Sparkpool and Ethermine, joined as well. Over 60% of the Ethereum network's hash rate now stands against this proposal. They even created a website, StopEIP1559.org, which shows all the Ethereum mining pools and whether they support or oppose the changes. Their goal is to convince individual miners to join a pool aligned with their views. Because remember, pools are just miners joining forces to solve blocks with a larger collective hash rate. And if anyone in the group successfully solves a block, the rewards are split across all the members. After all, even though you weren't the one to solve it, you still contributed to the overall effort. And who knows, maybe next block will be yours and you'll be the one to share the wealth in that case. So back to the miners. We know that they're pissed off and collectively they hold a lot of power, over 60% of the total network hash rate. This means that they could potentially pull off a 51% attack. They could prevent transactions from going through and they could also double spend their coins. But is that realistic though? Let's take a look at some of their options and how it might play out. First, they could hold us hostage by threatening to take a scorched earth approach, which means using their hash power to attack the network. We definitely don't want that to happen because it would crash the price of ether and cripple the network, at least in the short term. But would they really resort to such a drastic action though? I'm not so sure because they hold ether and they make their money in ether too. So this approach would damage the bottom line. Also, Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin said that he's not worried because quote, if some miners leave, new ones can come. And if miners 51% attack, we'll all move over to proof of stake as soon as possible. Another option is that miners could just keep the old version of the chain running without this upgrade included. Sounds good in theory, but there's a big problem here. EIP-1559 isn't the only change scheduled in the London hard fork. EIP-3238, or the difficulty bomb delay is also included. And miners must have this delay or they are screwed. Ethereum has a difficulty bomb written in their code that exponentially increases the difficulty to solve blocks until it just doesn't make sense to mine anymore. This was implemented so that we can all move over to Ethereum 2.0 when ready, rather than having some people still hold on to the 1.0 chain. But that's still a couple years away, so the plan right now is to delay this difficulty bomb until mid-2022. If you think about it, this is actually ingenious, because miners have to fork either way. They can't just stay on the old chain, or else the difficulty bomb would wreck them. But they also don't have the technical know-how to fork it themselves, so they kind of rely on the developers here. Another potential option is just to create an altcoin that saves the state of the Ethereum network. This means that they would take a snapshot of all the account balances and start from there with their own coin. If you were around back in 2016, you'll remember that's what happened when Ethereum Classic split from Ethereum. This is unlikely though because Ethereum is way different from how it was back then. Ethereum's ecosystem is much more mature right now and DeFi protocols have tens of billions of dollars locked in them. If all of these tools and apps aren't actively managed on the miners chain, no users are going to migrate over. It would be dead on arrival. There is one last thing that miners could do though. They could join the new chain, but manipulate the base fee to stay at zero, so none of the fees would ever be burned. Theoretically, they could do this by only mining blocks that are less than half full. But fortunately, not all miners are on the same page, so the open competition prevents this situation from happening. Let's take a step back and look at this from the miners' point of view. They essentially have four options. Attack the network, stay on the old chain, create a new coin, 
or manipulate the fees. None of these really look viable for them. So, sorry miners, but you're going to have to hold your nose and upgrade. All signs point to this fork happening whether or not they want it to. What do I prefer though? Well, as an ETH holder, I love the fee burns because that value starts flowing to us. After all, anything that decreases the supply of Ether is generally good for the price. Ryan Berkman, an Ethereum consultant, points out that this EIP benefits investors by burning millions in daily fees and by reducing selling pressure from the miners. He estimates that this EIP, along with our eventual move to proof of stake, could easily translate to a $20,000 Ether. Which, boy, I cannot wait for. Besides holding, I also actively use the Ethereum network and I welcome these changes. It's just going to make it easier to use, right? More predictable fees and more predictable confirmation times too. Which we sorely need right now since the network is super strained from everyone using DeFi and NFT apps. You gotta know though, this EIP does not fix the high fees. It just smooths out the spikes and also limits the number of overpaid transactions. We're ultimately going to have to wait until ETH 2.0 to see those really cheap fees. To be honest, I think miners need to chill out. They'll still be paid through block rewards and miner tips, which won't be that different than what they make currently under normal network conditions. It's just that they won't be able to cash in when the network reaches extreme usage. But in my opinion, we don't owe them any more fees than what's necessary to keep the network running. And on the flip side, they don't have an obligation to keep mining if it's not profitable for them either. So in the end, I think it will all work out and I was wrong to be worried about a potential civil war. That does not look likely to happen and we can continue to ride our ETH to new highs as it receives some much needed improvements and us holders get more favorable tokenomics too. What do you think though? Do you side with the miners or do you want this EIP to go through in a few months? Let me know down in the comments below. Next up, I have videos about a physical NFT platform and Ecomi with their OMI token, which has had a lot of buzz lately. So if you want to watch those, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Kevin from BFB, and I'll catch you on the next one.